Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Slight change today, and you, you might have seen something like this uh, mentioned before, but it's worth going over it as the climate change crisis is, of course, going to wind back up into uh, full gear in order to try and get Biden to push the Green New Deal. Uh, whether or not he wishes to support it at this point, it's very uncertain, but as, as we know, the uh, support for him didn't really exist. So, Road produced 84% of plastic dust in the atmosphere as tires churn and launch particles into the air study once. Now, this is, of course, trying to say, well, so you're going to go for electric cars. And let us just, of course, discount all the um, pollution problems that are going to be caused from actually trying to mine the minerals in order to provide for the, um, the, the batteries and the vehicles to be produced in the first place. And, of course, naturally, we are going to ignore all the problems that come in terms of landfillers trying to get rid of the batteries and in particular afterwards due to the difficulty if not impossibility of recycling them and instead we're just going to focus on the pollution of air from cars being used in situ or <laughs> in motion rather cool except of course now that isn't good enough because car tires seem to from danish research uh, last year, I think it was as recent as last year, maybe year before last, uh, said that it was four kilos of plastic for each tyre over its lifetime. And bear in mind how frequently you replace car tyres every few years or so. Maybe more frequently, depending on how much you like to rag your vehicle out. So, so comparing that to clothes, even polyester for example, it, it trumps over that. Um, undoubtedly. So instead, these are microplastics as well. Uh, and it isn't just from you know, what comes out of the ocean, which is, what, 11%, I think they said? They got a graphic down here in order to try and show between from cars and soil and um, water somewhere. There we go. So, so yeah, 11% from sea spray, 5% from soil emissions... 0.4% from dust near urban centres. Of course, you've got solid waste application to agriculture. And then road and braking emissions, 84%, which is the clear-cut winner. Now, problems with that is, of course, even if you go with electric cars, well, you're going to run into the same sorts of problems, in which case, quite an overlooked thing is going to be to revolutionise car tyres. Or, or if, if they wish to be even more radical, then it is going to have to be getting a new way to travel. Um, yeah, if they want to go back to the train journey idea and using metal instead, then by all means, go ahead and use steel or iron in order to transport and have those micro metals go into the airstream instead. But of course, it's going to be far less because the grip of trains are far inferior to cars when you look at the, the most... Oh, the, the steepest gradients that trains take as opposed to cars being a 1 in 33 as opposed to 1 in 3 <laughs> then you can see a clear difference as to just how grippy car tyres are and how much they get rid of compared to slick wheels on a train which is why leaves on the line are actually issues because if they've got such small grip in the first place then getting rid of that with all the, the slush and the, the leaves and the greenery and Steve Mould made a good video on this as, as well with uh, leaves and the, the effect that they have. And he used ice skates, I believe it was, to show that ice skates on metal, because it's metal on metal. Then yes, they, they do actually make a huge difference because of the lack of grip, which means there isn't so much being worn away from the wheel. Brilliant. So is that the way around? Because, you know, microplastics are quickly becoming the issue of the of the moment. When you're talking about plastics that go into sea life, it isn't just seeing a turtle with a straw in its nose, but instead it's microplastics into plankton which then work their way up the food chain, and that then means that everybody around the world, including you and me, are eating plastic when it comes to eating fish, which obviously nobody wishes to think of. Plastic is, of course, refined oil, which is just other dead fish. But nonetheless, nobody wants to think about uh, eating something that is refined, unless it's sugar. But yes, these microplastics are bad for other reasons. Of course, it does also then get into the crops. That's why you see the soil emissions are 5%. And that happens because, as they say here, the 
particulates, the microparticulates, in the air have been found in insects in Antarctica because they can last in the air for just a couple of hours or they can stay for six and a half days, as in a week, get caught up in jet streams and suddenly they're in a different continent. Suddenly they're even in Antarctica. So yes, it really is a global issue. If you were to put it that way. Uh, what a way to ground it. Well, thankfully, in terms of trying to get rid of plastic, some plankton have already evolved in order to consume plastic. Which is nice. And then suddenly it's not really an issue. So that's nature being nature and evolving. Lovely to see. Others are air filtration systems that are able to decompose the plastic, for want of a better word, that it pulls out of the air, and also does the same for carbon as well. Um different machines but same effect of pulling carbon out the air and then that is good for carbon nanotubes a bit pricey at the moment of a way to do it but nonetheless it is feasible similar to then using um, algae in order to draw carbon dioxide out the air so that also works quite well because who would have thought plants really love carbon dioxide but plastics that is also being used as a recycling effort so getting rid of plastics in oceans has also been capitalized on by <laughs> capitalistic entrepreneurs who see, oh, there is a problem that needs fixing. There's a lot of public support for it. So by developing a way in order to either recycle or reuse or remove plastic from our environment, there's going to be a lot of support for it. Not just because then people are um, feeling good for supporting something to get rid of their impact, in which case they can be polluting guilt-free if you're that way inclined, but also because then Oh, it's, it's so cool and radical to have something that has been made out of what would otherwise be waste. Because that's quite a trendy thing. But also because they're creating something worthwhile anyway. And even without the backstory of how it came to be, it's um, it's quite nice. So yeah, why not? So there are ways around it. Nice to know. It doesn't all have to be down to prevention. Although just finally to wrap up, I would, of course, remind you of the age-old story of concerns about New York, I believe it was, when horse and carriages were far more prevalent, that they were concerned about 100 years ago. Then the next decade or so, they wouldn't be able to move around in New York because the entire city would have just been clogged in horse manure from... You know, there just weren't enough people being able to, to clean up after the horses. And so it was just piling up in the streets. And, you know, given another 10 years, they wouldn't be able to move. And it was a massive problem that they really needed to find a way to, to fix. Of course, that never materialised because then people moved to cars instead. Which then thought, well, this is, this is brilliant. This has solved all our problems. Except now, no, they've created a new problem. So how's about we work on developing the next fix which will bring about our next set of problems as well but each time they're a better problem to have with that i'm done so let me know what you guys think down below in terms of these microplastics do you think they are a problem and if so how do we fix it is, is there a way to then change how they're created in the first place in which case we get off our lines of plastics and find a different method maybe a different method entirely from vulcanized rubber for car tires or if it's just a thing of, no, we can clean it up afterwards and it'll, it'll be fine, it won't be an issue. Or if you think, no, in, instead of cars, we're going to have a different way to do things, which is going to be far superior. In which case, we don't need to improve tyres, we don't need to change tyres, because we're not even going to be using cars. Whatever it is, I'm always intrigued to have to say, so let me know down below. And of course, as always, until next time, have a good one.